Another reason we got it was um, a lot of places we go, there's no other campers around. And so if we have a breakdown, this truck's over 20 years old and it has happened, is I can run to Napa and come back. And that's been super, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice insurance policy. It's a big warm fuzzy hug knowing that I have another way to get somewhere if our truck breaks down. Yeah, we're right. not stuck or dependent on a tow service or right. anything to come all the way out where we are. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're meeting Chris and Elizabeth. Hi folks. Hi. Super excited to be here. Yeah, and uh, you are have got a really nice setup for uh, camping and traveling. Yeah, thank you very much. And are you full time? We are full time. Yes, full we've time. Been full time for about six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you're young. Um, why are you out here? <laughs> okay, so right before COVID, uh, we moved to Guam, and we lived there for three years. And then on the way back from Guam, we uh, incurred a little bit of debt, and. Uh, what we thought we were going to do is not what ended up happening and we ended up in a truck camper <laughs> the initial plan was to kind of jump around the country with the truck camper to explore and kind of see where we wanted to settle down after guam but we had a couple family emergencies that threw us for a loop so we applied for work camping jobs our last work camping experience is over and now we're just full-timing it now so how's it gone in six months We've decided that we don't like campgrounds and we love boondocking. Right. <laughs> yeah. right it's six right. months of boondocking exclusively and we love it. So this is a, a dream come true for you. you this know, is. Yeah. Go camping and for a living. Yeah, this just is. outdoors all the time. Yeah. yeah. And one of the great things is you're, you've also learned how to live well, really cheaply. And that will serve you well in your old age too. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's definitely a skill. The frugality <laughs> and, and seeing where to cut the fat is very... Yes. And it's yeah. a disappearing skill. So how are you supporting yourself now? The meat and potatoes of our survival is YouTube. Um, we do make a little money on Ad AdSense. And then Patreon donations um, and PayPal donations. We do get um, a fair amount, about like $500 a month with that. And then we also have e-bike companies that reach out to us for reviews for their products. So they'll send us an e-bike for us to test and ride. And we actually work with um, a gentleman at a men's shelter and we sell those e-bikes to him at $500 for men that cycle through the men's shelter to use to get back on their feet. Um, and then we go in between work camping jobs. So we just came out of a work camping job and we've applied to some more. So uh, it's kind of a, a multi-layered kind of octopus approach, just fingers <laughs> in all the directions. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, a little money here, a little money there. It's not all tied in one spot. Yeah. And you, you mentioned uh, YouTube, so uh, tell us your YouTube, YouTube channel and your social media. So our YouTube uh, channel is Candy Adventures, just C-A-N-D-E. That's Chris and Elizabeth, so it makes candy. Uh, and then our Instagram is the same thing. Well, why don't we take a look around? Would that be all right? That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So why did you choose a uh, truck camper? We, we chose a truck camper, uh, even though it's limited on space and they are per square foot, the mo more expensive uh, than a pull behind camper is it allows you to get to a lot of places that you can't get with a bunch of extra axles. So this is a higher clearance vehicle. And once you kind of go down that route, you're pretty locked into a van, like a four by four conversion van or a truck camper. And the vans were just way out of price range. Yeah. So the truck camper was the next cheapest option. The other reason was we knew that when we went to explore in the truck camper, we wanted to take some sort of um, extra transportation or like a fun vehicle, like a boat. So we wanted something that had a hitch behind it which is how we ended up with a motorcycle trailer. Right. Well, let's take a look inside your uh, truck camper. Yes, hop up in there. This is a uh, pop-up. It is a pop-up camper. Uh, and the reason we went with a pop-up is, uh, for us, it was price. It's mostly price. It was a lot cheaper getting a pop-up when we were looking for them. And then uh, second, it gives you a much lower profile when you're going down the road. And right. if you're trying to get to some kind of hard to get to BLM spots, uh, you, you know, this comes all the way down to this level right here and you save another two or three feet. And so you can you can get under some some brush, maybe you couldn't get under normally. And it also keeps it from being so top heavy when you're getting a little off camber. Yes. So as you can see here, we have a north south bed. This is a RV queen. This is the biggest reason we like, one of the bigger reasons we like truck campers is we have a big full size bed and it's separate from our living area. And then all these windows here zip down and the other thing we like about it when we're boondocking is when we zip these down, you have almost a 360 degree view of the beautiful surroundings. And uh, the other reason we like that is for security. You know, if you're by yourself in the middle of nowhere, it's nice to be able to pop your head up out of bed and see in every direction when you hear a car coming. We lose storage space, not have any cabinets here, mm -hmm. but it just feels so much bigger in here. And as someone who's a little bit claustrophobic, that is a really big benefit having windows and just more space. So we do have a refrigerator here 
We do not use this much. We use it primarily for dry storage. We have our child safety lock on here to keep it closed on bumpy roads. Um, but primarily we use this as dry storage because these refrigerators, they like to be perfectly level. At least ours does before it'll work. Also, these are pretty hungry on propane. Yep. And ours doesn't like to work off battery whatsoever. And we don't like using propane a lot because it's the hardest fuel we have to refill. Um, propane's kind of annoying, so we just use propane for the stove. Um, so you got your Blue Eddy out on the uh, trailer. We do, and we usually leave it outside, and we have it charging. We have a, we have this solar power bank here charging off of our solar panels. We have 200 watts of uh, portable solar that are outside, and then we have 200 watts on the roof. And so when we're charging this thing up during the day, we'll then charge our Blue, Blue Eddy cooler uh, off of this power bank. Right. And then it'll last three or four days on a battery, which is really handy. A lot easier than dealing with this. Um, this, this is also a second bed, um, as you can see the pole here, you know, just a typical RV bed that slats in here and it's six foot here. This is primarily our couch and then our dog, our little dog, Mona, she sleeps here. So I see you do have a big TV. We do. We have a 42 inch TV in here, which is the biggest TV we could fit in here. Cause we got a deal at Walmart. They had open box for $88 and I couldn't, oh I couldn't walk away from that. And it is a little extravagant, but just because we live outside and boondock full time, doesn't mean that you don't want to watch a movie sometimes, or, or we have a PlayStation and, and play a game. Um, so we're not just completely feral out in the woods. This, this keeps us, you know, we watch Netflix and are attached to society like everybody else. And it's mounted in a way because this is a pop-up truck camper. Uh, it is actually mounted to the pop-up system. And as you can see here, there's just two wing nuts that attach it. Okay. Uh -huh. And so it just takes me about 10 seconds to undo this wing nut and slip this TV out when we drive so that we can collapse the top again. And Great. then this is the table. Uh, I'll move this out of the way. This is normally what would be your table or your bed. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens to fit perfectly right here over our shower. And that's where we normally leave it until we take a shower. And then here we actually have a shower. Our truck camper is, uh, does have a wet bath with a cassette toilet, but it's actually enough room to shower in here. And then with the relief of the, 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 the little uh, solar light here, you, you, there, you, you uh, probably six foot two person can stand up here in here. I'm 5'10 and I have plenty of room to wash up over my head and stand up. Mm -hmm. But we do not use the cassette toilet that much. That's uh, mostly for emergencies in number ones because cassette toilets are kind of difficult to find a place to drain. We even have an air conditioner. That air conditioner does work. And uh, we, when we're not using solar, um, like today is super overcast, we have a little champion uh, dual fuel generator that'll run off propane or gasoline. But our little generator is awesome because we can hook it up and charge that power bank in an hour and a half. And then while we're running the generators, when we'll uh, have our um, kind of extravagant time and we'll turn the TV on for an hour or two while the generator's running. There's our, uh, our tiny little kitchen. We got a little two burner. And, and because the only thing we do with our propane, it's for our hot water heater, which we only turn it on for a shower. It's a six gallon uh, hot water heater. And when we're cooking, a propane, usually a 120 pound propane tank usually lasts us more than two months. Uh, so for heat, we use, uh, this is a diesel heater in here. Oh yeah. This used to be a propane furnace uh, and it is now a just a cheap sub hundred dollar propane, uh, I'm sorry, diesel heater inside of here. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy because this is a diesel truck just to take that nozzle uh, when you're filling up and then go over and fill up our 10 liter tank, which is about, I think two gallons. And that'll last uh, a long time. Under here, this is our house battery. And then we have, uh, for a truck camper, we have a surprisingly large fresh water tank. It's, uh, it's uh, rated at 30 gallons, but written on the top of it's like 34. Um, so that, that leaves us, an, uh, us enough water uh, for about a week before we need to refill without being stingy at all. We can each take a shower uh, two times each and then all our drinking and cooking can be done and uh, for about a full week off of that much water. A little and bit of storage here up uh, below the bed. There is. This is our super cluttered storage. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I said that that one's not that cluttered, but this one is. Um, all of our USB-C cables and uh, all that kind of stuff jammed in there. And then under here, you do oh, have a lot of storage. You have a lot of storage jam back through there. And then on the sides of the bed, I'll move this cushion, you have uh, oh, yeah. each side of the bed, you have this whole thing is for clothes. Nice. So we each have our own side of the bed and it's like having your little nightstand there. Well, why don't we take a look outside? All right. So uh, this is your truck camper. Tell us about it. So this is a 2001 uh, Ford F-250 and it does have the truck camper package, which I think was uh, updated to like F-350 springs in the back and maybe a little bigger spring pack in the, in the front and a little bigger spring pack in the back. Um, it is the 7.3 diesel 
and it does have a six speed manual transmission. These are known as being reliable and people love Ford or hate Ford and hate. We bought this because it was my brother's truck and he gave us a good deal. We paid 14,000 <laughs> for it and it had pretty low miles. We're not real brand loyalists or nothing like that. Uh, but we do believe in doing your research. So we looked up the ZF six speed transmission and the engine and common faults and problems. And so we decided that was a pretty sound buy. And uh, that's why I got this truck and yeah. no emissions. You don't have to worry about deaf fluid. I know oh, modern yeah. diesels, it's the, the emission systems on them end up grenading them. And this don't have no catalytic converters. It doesn't have any deaf. Uh, anything like that. We've done a couple upgrades uh, after we bought the truck. The first being this uh, front hitch system. Mm -hmm. Primarily it was initially for a motorcycle carrier on the front um, before we had that trailer. And then Chris already had this rack and uh, storage tote set up that now we can just interchange them. We do get asked a lot by people um, if this causes this truck to overheat and it doesn't. Uh, we've seen no difference in the temperatures running this box in front of the radiator. These are about 35 inch tires. That's um, nice. I'm fibbing a little. The, the metric equivalent's really like 34, but I always like to seem a little bigger. <laughs> um, but what we really like about them is uh, just that extra clearance under the vehicle. Yes. Um, yeah. when, when we look for places to boondock, a lot of times we specifically look for something that's got, uh, if you've ever been to like Moab or off-road and a lot of oh, obstacles, yeah. they'll call the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And if you can't cross that obstacle, uh, then your vehicle can't make it for the rest of the trail and it lets you know up front. And so we look for a gatekeeper a lot of times when we, when we camp, is there, a, is there a deep wash? Is there something? And usually that'll eliminate most of the fifth wheels that'll eliminate most of uh, the big RVs. And so we'll look for a gatekeeper and, and having that clearance really does help us uh, more than the four wheel drive, just the clearance, especially out in the yeah. desert. We did go with the uh, fast gun, who makes these torque lift, torque I guess? Lift, yeah. Torque lift, uh, these are frame mount tie downs and they're really sturdy. And um, the reason we really like these two is because there's a, pin, there's a pin in here and I can release this pin and this whole thing slides out. And so when you don't have the camper off the truck, none of this sticks out. We can see our custom water cap here. <laughs> I lose water caps all the time. Every time we refill, I set my water cap up here and then uh, that's it. This is also where our outdoor shower is. Uh, you can see that the door just perfectly aligns with that. That's exhaust. a diesel heater exhaust. <laughs> <With> a little <laughs> hole. <laughs> a, little, a little knife cutting and you're good to go. Yeah. And then this compartment is where we keep the uh, diesel tank for the diesel heater. So there's our... It's just flopping in there. Nice. But nice it's nice. And handy. It keeps it separate from the yeah. main living area. So if you're yeah. Pe yeah, spilling and stuff. So most of the time when we're boondocked, I, people always say, where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? And I have it stored back here. So these are our traction recovery boards that we keep tied here all the time. So they're quick to get to. But this, if you're really boondocking, I think everybody ought to have one of these. This is a, a military issue e-tool. And uh, this, is, this is our bathroom. This is, helps us get unstuck. Uh, it could be a weapon. Uh, but I th this is something that gets used almost every day. And we keep a fresh coat of paint on it uh, and I keep the, the threads lubed so it works right. But if you can find one, especially an old one like this that has a wooden handle and it's a little bit longer. And uh, the reason I say that uh, is from lots and lots of experience, not to get very graphic, but that makes a seat. <laughs> yeah. That's 50% yeah. of a seat. And if you get one with a long handle like that, it's a more doable seat yeah. than if you imagine it was this tall. Right. Um, so if you're going to boondock, especially out in the middle of nowhere, BLM, I think this is an essential item. This, this and a squirt water bottle yeah. are game changers and they're cheap. Well, Chris, Elizabeth, I really appreciate your sharing your home and your life with us. It's uh, you're a real example of people who just don't want to sit at home and rock their lives away. Definitely. Get out and do something. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> and so people want to follow you closely. How can they do that? On YouTube, that's our primary uh, upload where we do like all of our outdoor adventures and then we'll post um, maybe more day-to-day -day stuff or snippets of YouTube on our Instagram. Uh, both of those are gonna be under Candy Adventures or C and E Adventures uh, for Chris and Elizabeth. Right, very, very good folks. So go there now, subscribe and oh, awesome. uh, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. So folks, if you got anything out of this video and you've been inspired a little bit and entertained, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.